Hello and welcome to the seventh video in this series on making a Space Invaders style game in Scratch 3.0. In this video we'll be adding level complete and game over messages to our game. Now to keep our game's design simple, rather than having different sprites uh, for each message, we're going to create one new sprite called game messages and we're going to be using different costumes within that sprite to show each message. So let's get started by creating a new sprite called game messages. And we're going to want to set that sprite to appear at x0 and y0. Now we're going to make our level complete message first, so let's name this costume for the sprite to level complete. And we're then going to use the text tool and we're going to just add some text to our screen um, to say level complete. Now it's important that we're going to get this around the center point, so let's just make our message a bit bigger and try our best to center it within the costume. And you're going to want to choose a color that stands out against your game background, so maybe get something contrasting. And to make it really stand out we could even add a bit of a drop shadow, um, so to do that you just need to select your text, go copy, paste, and then on the copy set that to black and then press the uh, back button up here to push position it right at the back and then you'll see that you get a kind of drop shadow for your sprite. Now if you've done that then you're going to want to group those together so just again using the select tool click outside drag a box around both press group and now as you move them they're going to move together. So that's our message costume made, now we need to add code to make it appear at the right time in our game. So let's go to the code editor for the game messages sprite and we're going to drag in a when I receive block, so that's events and when I receive and we're going to need to create a new message and that message is going to be level complete. So when I receive level complete now the first thing that we want to happen uh, when the level is complete is for all of the other game elements like the spaceship, uh, all the title bar and everything else uh, to disappear. So we can broadcast hide game elements and that's why we've been setting that up uh, for every sprite so far. Next we're going to want to make sure that our message appears in the right place on the screen so if we go to motion and we choose uh, go to and make sure it's set to go to x0, y0 so that it's right in the center. And we also want to make sure that we've got the correct costume showing because we might have, in fact we will have several different costumes for the different messages. So switch costume to level complete. And finally we need to make sure that it's actually showing so we drag a show block as well. Now to hide our message when we don't want it um, showing on the screen anymore we just very simply we just need a um, when I receive and we're going to use the hide game elements again so when I receive hide game elements I just want to hide the message so let's just test that if we click on hide it disappears and when I click on this it should reappear ah it's not because it's it's instantly triggering this one which hides it which is competing here, which does make sense. So if we change this broadcast hide game elements, get rid of that, and we're going to change it to a broadcast and wait. So broadcast hide game elements, what it should do is it should run this to hide it, and then it should carry on to show these. So let's try that. Yeah, perfect. So hide, show. Okay, so broadcast and wait. So we let that one finish before we then go on to positioning and showing it again. So that's our triggers set up, now we need to make changes to our um, alien sprite so that when all the aliens have been shot it broadcasts level complete. So let's click on the alien sprite and we're going to add some code to this when I receive alien shot. Okay so once we've hidden the alien before we delete it we're just going to add a little test in here and we're going to test if the aliens count value has reached zero yet or not. So um, let's put a if, so that's from control, we grab an if and it's going to go inside here, just move that delete to the bottom. Um, so if, and the thing we're testing again is if the alien count 
has reached zero, so we're going to need an alien count. So let's grab that, aliens count, put it on the side, uh, and we're going to want an equal sign. So equals operator, pop that in there, put aliens count in there, and we're going to say if that's equal to zero. And if it is equal to zero, we just need to broadcast level complete. So that's events and broadcast, and we can choose broadcast level complete. And that's going to trigger off this message, which is going to hide everything, and show the level complete message. So let's give that a go. Let's click the green flag and just see what happens. Ah, interestingly, I've clicked green flag and it hasn't got rid of my initial level complete. That's telling me that I haven't got a hide game elements when I click green flag. So let's add that quickly. Let's go to the stage. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, when green flag is clicked, we're broadcasting start level. I'd also like before that just broadcast anything that's on the screen. Okay, so I've just added broadcast hide game elements before broadcast start level. Let's try that again. And of course, I've got the same problem. I should have done broadcast hide game elements and wait. Will I never learn? So, broadcast hide game elements and wait and then broadcast start level let's see what happens now that's better okay so I can start shooting and let's see if it says level complete when all of my aliens have been shot and there we go level complete so that's worked that's perfect um, so now we just need to add the code for the game over message uh, which is going to be really similar we just need to go back to our um, game messages sprite and we're going to create a new costume to show uh, for a game over message and then we're going to add really similar code to this lot um, to show that when a game over message has been uh, sent out so let's just do that so costumes duplicate the costume we've got call it game over and we can go straight into our little um, text bit and we could even using the text tool click in that and change it to game over notice it's only changing uh, one layer at a time so that's fine just need to click on the second one and do the same and I might want to select the top one maybe make it a different color uh, game over deserves maybe some red I think and I'm going to select group and position those more centrally on the screen. Game over. So I've got my level complete and game over messages. So let's go back to the code editor. Now we can just duplicate this when I receive block. So right click, duplicate, drop it here. And when I receive, we're going to need a new message. And it's going to be game over. So when I receive game over, I want to hide everything else, go to the center point, switch my costume to game over and show it. Okay, so that's going to make this message appear when the game um, has been lost. But of course we still need to add the code now to make that happen. So when is the game lost? Well the game's going to be lost when the aliens have reached the very bottom of the screen. Uh, that's one way of losing the game. The other way of losing the game is um, if one of these aliens hits our spaceship. So those two events can cause the game to be lost. So let's start off with um, the code that is going to uh, test for whether the aliens have gone far enough down the screen. So go back to your alien sprite and we're going to look at the shift aliens down routine that we've made already. When I receive shift aliens down and all we need to do is say is the aliens Y value or its Y position below a certain point. Okay, so for that we're going to need an if block. So I can grab that from control if, and I'm going to want to check if the Y position of the alien is less than um, because it's going to be because remember the numbers get lower as you go down. So if it's less than, put that in there, Y position there. And if it's less than, let's say, minus 120. Because, of course, this is the um, 
uh, zero line, as it were, and anything under here is a minus number. So if it's less than 120, then what do we want to do? Well, we want to broadcast game over. So let's do that. Let's go to events, broadcast, and let's broadcast game over. And you'll see that actually it's triggered. Um, so that's good. Let's just run that again one more time. For the sake of testing, actually, here's a good tip. If you go to your stage, you can change your clock interval to 0.2, and it means that you don't have to wait as long for the aliens to make their way across the screen. So let's try that again. So we've got the aliens are working down, and every time they work down, they're going to do a test to see if they're too low. So let's see what happens as we get closer, and hopefully one more. Oops, so okay, they've got quite low. Where's going to be 120, I wonder then? On that occasion, uh, it triggered a game over, so that's good. Uh, notice lots of other things are still happening, it seems. So um, that tells me that we're still getting uh, clock ticks going on. Um, so maybe we should go back to our stage and say, hey, when it's game over, stop uh, this routine from running. So let's do that. Let's go, when I receive um, game over, I just want to stop other scripts in this sprite. So that's under control. And stop, instead of stop all, stop other scripts in this sprite. And actually the same will be true for uh, level complete. So we can duplicate and just do that for level complete as well. And that means the, um, the clock isn't going to keep ticking and doing other stuff. Oh, and I've noticed this, that my score variable is still showing. So uh, we're going to want to make that disappear as well when either level complete or um, game over has happened. So we need to have a look at that, don't we? So we're on our stage, and if you remember, the score was kind of a, a wide thing owned by the stage. So let's just add into this a when I receive hide game elements. When I receive hide game elements, variables, I want to hide variable score. And because I've done that and I've hidden it, that means that when we do a start level, I'm going to want to show variable score as well. Show variable score. Okay, that's much better. So the other thing that can cause an alien, um, sorry, a game over, is if the spaceship touches an alien. So let's go to our spaceship sprite. And in this forever loop, where we're checking um, if we're moving left or right, we're just going to add another test. So it's going to continuously be checking for those things, but it's also going to be continuously checking whether we're touching an alien or not. So let's grab an if block, pop that in near the top. Uh, it's going to put everything inside, which I don't want. So let's drag all of that out and put it underneath. So it should be forever if this. And the thing we're going to be doing is testing if we're touching uh, the alien. So if, go to sensing, touching alien. And if it is, then again, we want to broadcast game over. So control, uh, sorry, events, broadcast, game over. So let's test this again using the green flag. So um, obviously I can shoot stuff, that still works. It's always important to make sure we haven't broken our other functionality. Uh, but let's let this now get down to the bottom and see if it touches the spaceship. So it should happen on the next pass. Oh, not quite. There we go. An alien touched the spaceship and we got a game over. So that's working perfectly. And I'm hoping, yes, we're not seeing any pulses on the clock tick either, which is good. And that's because we've killed that off by stopping these sprites from running when we received game over in the stage. So everything's working really well. Uh, the final thing we're going to do is to sort of jazz up the appearance of these messages, add a little bit of visual pizzazz. So let's go back to our game messages. And rather than just having them just show, which is a bit boring, let's make them sort of spin into life or flash or something more interesting. Uh, so for this, we're going to create some custom blocks um, which will uh, define uh, complex visual behaviors. So let's go to my blocks and let's make a block and let's make a block called spin. So this is going to define the spinning of uh, a message when it appears. So press OK and you'll get a define spin hat. And uh, add the following blocks to this. We're going to go to looks 
and I'm going to set an effect and I want to set the pixelate effect to 100. So the message is going to be completely pixelated. If I click, you'll see what that looks like. Really pixelated. And what we're going to do is we're going to have it spinning and getting less pixelated until it's ready on the screen. So we're going to add to that a um, repeat block. So that's control and we're going to repeat 10 times. And we're going to, within this block, we're going to rotate um, clockwise 36 degrees. So 10 revolution, 10 repeats of this will do a full 360 degrees. Oh, I should make it a point in the direction 90 degrees at the start as well, actually, just in case we've left it not uh, in the right direction because its default is direction 90. So we'll set that, repeat this 10 times. And um, if we test that, you'll see it spins, but we want to also change the pixelation. So let's go back to looks. And we're going to change the pixelate effect by negative 10. And so once that's run 10 times, that will be negative 100, which will have undone this. So let's click and test. And you see you get a nice, cool kind of sort of pixelated and then spin effect. So that's our spin method. Uh, let's create another one. Let's call it flash. So my blocks make a block. Let's call this flash. And for this one, let's drag the define over there. We're going to add the following blocks. We're going to repeat three times. Uh, you could change this to be 10 times if you wanted, but we're going to repeat this three times. And we're going to add a show. So looks, show. Then we're going to wait for mm, 0.3 seconds, perhaps. Then we're going to add a hide. And then we need to duplicate or we need to add another weight. And uh, so that will show, hide, show, hide, show, hide, which means we need a final show on the end once that has finished flashing. So let's tap that to see what happens. And you get a flash. Perfect. So what we could do now is when we've got level complete, we could, if we wanted to, um, make that spin into life. So my blocks and stick a spin on there. And maybe when we get a game over, we should use a flash. So if I uh, tap on these hats to see those, to test those, we get a nice spin for level complete or for game over, we get a, a flash. Now you could add your own visual effects. You can just make as many blocks as you like. And within those blocks, you can put whatever color or movement effects maybe you could have messages that bounce around the screen or fly in from the top or from the from the side or maybe they start small and they zoom in to fill up the screen it's entirely up to you to get creative uh, and then once you've defined those blocks you just need to drag the trigger blocks uh, in to the appropriate when i receives in order to call those visual effect effects so let's just one more time uh, use the green flag. Let's just test, make sure we haven't broken anything. So first of all, I'm going to try and complete the level and see what happens now. Level complete, perfect. And let's uh, just try this again, um, but let's have a uh, game over. So I'm going to leave some on the side to sort of hit me. So let's see what comes down now. So the next pass, I should hit an alien and game over and it flashes onto the screen. So that's it for this video. Uh, in the next video, we're going to add our final touches to our game by creating a title screen and adding some background music to our game.